All right, let's go ahead and evaluate the six trigonometric functions when I have an angle, which we're going to call t, as 4 pi over 3. So the first thing we want to do is be able to graph this angle on our standard form to identify what is the coordinate point on the unit circle. And if you don't know the unit circle by now, I would highly recommend that you make sure you know your unit circle. Okay, so there's a couple things that I want you to understand that I was able to do rather quickly in my head because I know the unit circle. First of all, where this angle is was just by graphing it in standard form. But by knowing the unit circle, I didn't really actually memorize this point. What I memorized was this point right up here. Okay, and that's what I want you to understand. This coordinate point in the first quadrant is going to be a positive one half comma square root of three over two. So therefore, if this angle here, you can see now is in the third quadrant. Well, what's the difference between this point and this point? They're exactly the same, right? The difference is this is in the first quadrant, so the x and the y coordinate are positive, whereas this angle is in the third quadrant, so both my x and my y are going to be a negative. Now, that's very, very important because when we're trying to evaluate for the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, we need to know what are the x and y coordinates of our point on the unit circle because that is how we're going to evaluate for our angle at 4 pi over 3. So we have our x and y. Let's go and evaluate here for the sine, cosine, and tangent first. Okay, so whenever you're evaluating your trigonometric functions and you're given an angle, in this case, it's 4 pi over 3, that's what t represents here. Um, remember, sine represents the y coordinate that is on the unit circle. So I go and take a look at my head and say, oh, the y coordinate is a negative square root of 3 over 2. For cosine, that's going to represent the x coordinate. And you can see over here, that's going to be a negative 1 half. And the tangent is going to represent by the y over x. So you can see in this case, that's going to be a negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by a negative 1 half. Now, there's some interesting things that are going to be dividing out in this case. So let's go and write it out so therefore you can see exactly what's going on. Okay, so first of all, what we have here is a negative divided by negative. That's going to be a positive, right? And we also have the square root of 3 is being divided by 2, and the 1 is being divided by 2. Well, you could multiply the top and bottom by 2 if you want to get rid of those, but hopefully you can just represent that when you have the top in the numerator and in the denominator are both being divided by 2, then they're basically just going to be, we don't like to say canceling each other out, but you don't need, you like you can just multiply by 2 on the top and bottom, and therefore that is going to eliminate them from on there. So therefore, this is just going to simplify to a square root of 3. Again, just to kind of be a math teacher, if you want to get rid of it, multiply by 2 on the top and bottom, right? Those 2's will divide out, and those 2's will divide out. Therefore, you'll see it's a square root of 3 over a 1, because the negatives are also going to divide out as well, right? Okay, so now let's go and get into our reciprocal identities. The cool thing about the reciprocal identities is all they are, these solutions, just reciprocated. And so what I mean by reciprocated is if sine of t is y, then cosecant of t is 1 over y. Well, so therefore, that's going to take this answer, negative square root of 3, 2, and put it over 1. Okay, now to simplify this, what you're going to want to do is actually multiply by your reciprocal. So therefore, that's going to be a 2 over negative square root of 3 on the top as well as on the bottom. And then to finalize the answer, or at least to keep the radical off the denominator, you're going to want to rationalize your denominator by multiplying by square root of 3 on the top and bottom. Okay, so the answer looks pretty crazy, and it did take a little bit of work, but guess what? The more and more you do of this, the less and less you have to do that. Because once you'll see, you're like, oh, 1 over negative square root of 3 over 2, that's going to be a negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. Like, you're going to get used to it. It's going to come up a lot of times. Now, in this example, I have cosine of t equals negative 1 half, so basically that's going to be a 1 over a negative 1 half. Again, multiplied by your reciprocal, right? So that's going to be a negative 2 over 1. And what, that, what is that going to give you? That's just going to give you a negative 2. Now, the same thing for the tangent. What I don't want you to do is you could rewrite this as a negative 1 half over a negative square root of 3 over 2, right? Or you could simply just say, well, why don't I just take a 1 and put it over my final answer that I got for cotangent, right? And therefore then, now all you simply need to do is rationalize the denominator to get your final answer, which is going to be a square root of 3 over a 2. Now, in this example, I did a fairly simple angle that we could go ahead and graph rather simply. But if you want to see me evaluate six trigonometric functions for a big angle, then go and check out the next video I have for you here.